Before I start the video, I would like to give a massive shout out to my Patreons who have been supporting my channel. If you would like to check out my Patreon and receive early access to some very exciting videos coming soon, then please click the link in the description below. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Den here once again. And for a late night upload today, we are going to be talking about um, a very interesting article that has been released from Deadline, which is a big film and TV uh, insider that you know probably stuff about Marvel, Disney, Sony, all of the big companies. And uh, there's been an interesting article released today that talks about the Disney deal and also offers a little bit of information or inside information that they've heard about the future of the show. And I've seen snippets of this interview already online on Twitter today. And um, yeah, I'm uh, very intrigued by this. So um, let's have a look about it. Let's have a discussion. Because honestly, Doctor Who's future, well, um, it's a very interesting one. So yeah, with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so from Deadline, Doctor Who's regeneration has the Disney gamble paid off. So those lucky enough to attend May's Disney's upfront at the North Jazzit Centre. Uh, were treated to those clips, teasers, and appearances from some of the world's biggest stars. So, obviously, there was uh, a lot of stuff from, uh, you know, the House of Mouse, uh, a.k.a. Disney. So, there's Abbott uh, Elementary, Welcome to Wrexham, The Acolyte, and a lot of ESPN stuff. But almost completely absent from the upfront festivities was Doctor Who. The iconic British sci-fi series that uh, Disney Plus now co-produces is with the BBC following uh, what was... Uh, yeah, one of the biggest global TV show deals of the past decade. So, um, Doctor Who was handled in a very minor bit of real estate at this convention, uh, but its lack of front and centre placement may spin a yarn about the series' position in the Disney priority log, uh, nearly three years on from the deal being struck. So, following the conclusion of the first Disney BBC Doctor Who season several weeks ago, Deadline has taken the opportunity to analyse its performance both locally and across the pond, its critical reception and just what the future has in store for the deal. Noises that it may not last beyond its initial two seasons are already reverberating around international TV circles. And one source close to the production tells us that they feel its future hangs in the balance already. Disney, the BBC, and co-producers BBC Studios and Bad Wolf all declined Deadline's interview requests for this article. So, okay, um, interesting. Um, let's talk about it though, uh, late, late, later on. So, Doctor Who is as much a part of the British cultural furniture as cups of tea or the post office. Recent sins aside. Uh, making the stars of iconic Doctors such as Tom Baker, William Hartnell, John Pertwee and more recently Matt Smith. It's been airing on and off for more than 60 years and was regenerated with fanfare when Doctor Who obsessive Russell T. Davis took the reins in 2005 for the relaunch. So uh, this is where I I saw a snippet right um, here and it says that each episode is meant to be around £10 million or $13, uh, $13 million sorry, to make. Now I think this was uh, disproven by Russell T. Davis himself. Um, Whilst, yeah, it does have a bigger budget, it's nowhere near £10 million per episode. So, that's something that uh, is uh, wrong there. So, I'm going to skip past that part. But this seems to be a little bit more of an opinion piece with some insider stuff. So, Disney's influence could have seen almost from the get-go and his ambitions were lofty. Sorry, Davis's influence, not Disney's. <laughs> uh, with the immediate talk of spin-offs and the creation of a Hooniverse. Uh, his choice of Doctor, Sex Education star Shita Gatwa, was the first black and first openly gay actor to enter the TARDIS. Gatwa's companion, Millie Gibson, was a relative, uh, relatively unknown, and uh, she will be joined next year by a second female companion, uh, Andor's Rada Sethu. At times last year, it felt as if the media was receiving almost weekly Doctor Who casting announcements, including David Tennant and Catherine Tate, who returned for the Christmas anniversary specials, no, the 60th anniversary specials, and uh, guest roles for the likes of trans actress Yasmin Finney, who broke out in Heartstopper, Drag Race star Jinx Monsoon, and Glee icon Jonathan Groff. The PR machine was in full flow in anticipation built among fans and industry uh, watchers. So, with uh, the dust now settling, our across-the-board analysis of Doctor Who's ratings and critical reception paints a nuanced picture, one that is reflective of the difficulty of judging modern TV series' performance 
when so many metrics are in play. So, uh, okay, the Doctor Appreciation Society, uh, the uh, coordinator of that, has, uh, well, uh, called Tony Jordan, has said he thought it was a mixed bag. So that's very interesting there. Um, so again, I think this is a quote people from, uh, well, like, uh, reviews and stuff. Uh, so we'll skip past all this stuff. So here we go. Jason Quinn, the editor of the Doxy magazine, quotes a more positive figure uh, when pondering the latest iteration of the show. What's great about Doctor Who is that it can kind of do anything, and that's what this season did more than others. Each episode was so different in tone, and I struggle to think of any other family show that attracts so much discussion. So a lot of this is literally just like quoting people that are, to, you know, to do with, um, you know, the show and stuff like that. A lot of this is just, uh, you know, about ratings and stuff like that. We've already had a bit of discussion about this on the channel. Um, so, yeah, the first episode in May uh, launched with uh, a disappointing 2.6 million overnight viewers. Again, the whole midnight strategy and uh, stuff like that did have a massive uh, impact on that. Um, and yeah, obviously, just again, stuff about ratings, da, da, da. Now, there is something, again, another snippet that I did see here. So, right, here we go. All eyes are now on the upcoming season, which is in the can and due to launch next year, along with the long-rumoured set of spin-offs that compromise the new Hooniverse, including the war between the land and sea. Fans were delighted when the spin-off was alluded to in the 73 Yards episode, the latest season, a deadline is told that shooting will commence in September. One of our sources close to production believes Disney will need to make a decision on its future relationship with the show soon after the war between the land and sea wraps, and this could have a bearing on how long the in-demand Gatwa, who will lead a West End production of the importance of being earnest at the end of this year, remains the Doctor. Although the next season has wrapped, uh, this source predicts that the final episode has been left open-ended, with a possibility remaining that Gatwa could regenerate into his successor if he chooses to exit. Gatwa's agents haven't responded to uh, Deadline's request for a comment at this time. Um, so sources are split on the extent to uh, which Disney is pulling out, um, and obviously will this harm uh, the, the show's future. So they've uh, said that, yeah, Doctor's obviously had a budget increase. Not to what they've said in this um, article, because that was already disproven by Russell uh, several months ago. But um, it will be interesting to see, would another uh, network take it on? Would it be Netflix or Amazon Prime or something? I don't know, but let's talk about this article. So I've got a fair, fair amount to say about this. Okay, um, I'm just going to say straight up that I think a lot of this, um, well, a lot of the things of the article are just opinion pieces. Um, it's not, like, entirely based off, like, inside sources. A lot of it is just, like, quoting people that are in the industry about how they felt about it. Um, obviously, quoting about the ratings and stuff like that. Which, yeah, the ratings aren't exactly, um, you know, perfect. You know, Russell's um, already acknowledged that. But he did also say that um, it's, you know, achieved the goals by the BBC. But there was no mention of Disney. So I can see where some of this, um, you know, curiosity and a bit of worry is coming from. But um, I am interested to know what will happen past this second season, which will be airing next year. So we do know that a spin-off is obviously being filmed as well. That is also meant to be airing in 2026. So past then, we don't actually know what's going to be happening in the Hooniverse. Now, could Shooty leave past season two? Um, I mean, Russell hasn't said anything about that. Um, I imagine it would be far too early anyway to say if Shooty was leaving, especially, you know, the fact that um, season one has just finished airing. You know, we still got a Christmas special this year. There's a spin-off that Shooty might even actually be involved in as well. And then also, um, you know, a uh, second season ready to drop early next year. So, I don't know. I, I, a lot of this to me screams that it is just based on pure, pure speculation and stuff like that. Um, you know, and yeah, there, there, there's been a lot of speculation on whether Disney are happy with the show. But, I mean, it's getting a whole H at uh, Comic-Con this year. It's the first time Doctor's been there since 2018. Um, and it's nice to see Doctor at the forefront of things. Obviously, I'm not going to say 100% that Doctor Who's in safe hands because, you know, it's far too early to say if um, Doctor Who is in trouble or something like that. But even if Doctor Who was let go by Disney and stuff like that and that deal did end, um, you know, they're, they're, like the show would survive. I think the show is too much of a big brand and a priority for the BBC. They'd strike a deal somewhere else if they had to. 
But um, still very exciting nonetheless to see where the show goes. Uh, wh whether I think Shooty is going to leave after the second season? No. Uh, I think, if anything, if we don't get a third season um, in 2026, we could get a handful of specials again. Because it was it technically wouldn't be a gap year if we get uh, like a few specials scattered across the year alongside a spin-off as well. We'd, we'd still be getting a decent amount of uh, Doctor Who universe content. So, And then perhaps in those specials, Shooty bows out of the role, similar to um, how Russell, not Russell, no, sorry, David Tennant did in uh, 2010, uh, well, 2009 and 2010. So, yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning into today's video. If you are new around here, please click that like button and leave a comment as well. What do you think about this? Do you think Deadline are onto something or do you think it is just a load of waffle? But yeah, I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for all the support and be sure to subscribe for more nerdy content because the support on the channel has been amazing recently. And I really want to be just making Doctor Who content for you guys. But I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for all the support. Take care. Love you all. And peace.